Hey guys. Going offshore fishing again today. Sorry about yesterday, but today we're pretty excited. We're going out. Darcy's just getting up. She's a little bit not not a morning person. <laughs> but uh, today we're gonna try some bottom fishing. It's a west wind, so uh, we're gonna try a little something new. We don't, you know, not too good for pelagics or the or the uh, you know dolphins and stuff on a uh, west wind. But uh, you know, we only got the fish, so we're gonna go out there. We're gonna buy some live bait. We're gonna do some bottom fishing. We're gonna set up a little drift. Uh, with some live baits as well, so we can really cover a lot of the ground when you're drifting down here in South Florida. Someone told us about a weed line that was out there the last couple days, um, about 20 miles out. But you know, it's a changing wind and those things move around, and we got to go about 10 miles to get to the spot we want to bottom fish anyway. So we're not going to go on a wild goose chase. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to go out there and hit it, and we're pretty excited. Kind of a wonderful day. It's beautiful out in South Florida today. It's about it's going to be about 80, 85 today. And Silent Frank's coming. And Silent Frank's coming, and uh, let's get right to it. All right, so I'm at the tackle shop, and just talk about how expensive this fishing is. You know, I just spent eighty-four dollars here on a couple things of bait. Some sardines and some squid and some weights and some, you know, a couple sabikis. Nothing big, you know. But, uh, so, offshore fishing. I it mean, it's expensive. Even little things add up real fast. And so, this is why we have the calendars for sale. Don't forget, and the bracelets. <laughs> we try to use that Amazon link with our sizzle, so she can keep doing this stuff and supporting your sport and our sport. And all right, let's get to the boat. Holy cow! We, it's 8 o'clock, about 8.30, Kraken Noon fishing team. It was my birthday yesterday, so we're getting here a little late. But we have never seen this many people down at the marina so early in the morning. I, mean, I don't know if there's some sort of event going on, or it's a beautiful day, and the busiest week uh, of Florida vacations. That's this Christmas week. But man, hopefully there's not a, a million boats out there. But uh, I guess we'll see what happens. It's a beautiful day, we're gonna have a great time. You can see this parking lot, totally full, crazy. Hold this, Frank. Frank, you have any dates this week? I do actually. I got a uh, friend from uh, Boston coming down. Frank's got a date. Too bad, Ashley. You lost your chance. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you still have the chance with you? I still have the chance. <laughs> ready to catch him up today, Sizzle? Yes. <laughs> ready to go. You haven't woke up yet, right? I'm awake. So here right outside the inlet, usually there might be some bait around, but maybe not. We're just taking a quick look, catch some more bait, and then we got to run about 10 miles to our spot. But you can see it's a beautiful day. Check out this fish we caught. We're bottom fishing. We haven't had much luck yet, but we've caught a, uh, had a few bites already. And I actually just pulled up this fish. This is a big old lizard fish, I believe. But look at him. He's crazy looking. He's got some sharp teeth. Frank over here just got the first mutton in the boat. Nice, beautiful fish. He's definitely short. We can't keep him. I think he's like maybe 12 inches, 13 inches long. But um, we're going to go ahead and de-hook him. And then we got to send him back down right away. But he's all blown out from, um, from coming up from deep water. And you can see like his eyeballs are bulging and his stomach is bulging a little bit. So let me get the proper tool to uh, deflate him and then I'm going to send him back down. All right, there's a lot of tools out there on the market that uh, help you uh, deflate these fish so they can go back down to the deep water and not just float on the surface. Um, but this is what we use. Sorry for the interruption, guys, but I have a very important thing to tell you, so listen very, very closely. I highly recommend for you to vet the fish to purchase something called the sequelizer. And the sequelizer is a non-invasive method of releasing the fish. And basically you attach it to the sequelizer, you drop them down to a certain depth, 
And once that fish reaches that depth, he actually decompresses, the sequelizer releases him, and the fish swims away no problem. And it's just way better method to release fish instead of poking a hole in him and um, handling him like that. I actually just purchased one for myself, but all the information will be in the description below for you to check out. I would highly recommend that you purchase the sequelizer. Um, I'm going to be poking a hole in his air bladder and I line up the pectoral fin like this kind of right behind the pectoral fin at an angle like a 45 degree angle go in and then once I'm in I can feel the air coming out so as soon as I get all the air out he's pretty much now he's pretty much not he's not uh, bulging anymore with air in his air bladder so he should be able to swim right down 14 two more inches Hi, buddy. And there he goes. See, if he, we didn't do that, he would still be floating. This is Frank, ladies. With a shirt off. He's a very handsome fella. <laughs> single still. <laughs> Tell him, Frank. Real life fish. Still single. Trying to get this fish shot. Yeah, there you go. So, Darcy and Brian, don't yell at me. <laughs> Color. What do we got? Yellow tail yellow, keeper. Yellow, 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 yellow. Keeper in the boat. Uh, he's close. Oh, <laughs> oh, he literally just puked up his dinner. Let's uh, double check the size on these guys, but I think he's keeper. All right, so I've got my sea deck ruler, very, very handy. Go ahead and uh, you know measure all my fish right here. He is keeper. The yellow tail here have to be a total of 12 inches total length, not to the fork. So you can see he's about 14 inches long. So this is a nice keeper yellow tail. Pretty happy that we've already got dinner, but now we just need a few more of these to make some fish tacos. Check out this fish, guys. This is a crazy looking fish. This is a trumpet nose, or a trump, trumpet fish? Trumpet fish. And it's a trumpet fish. It's called a trumpet fish because you can see its mouth is literally shaped like a trumpet. Really cool. And um, I actually caught one of these a few months ago, and it was much bigger than this, actually. Really cool looking fish, and look at his tail. Check that out. It's just like a long stream. Like, it's really cool looking. And my dad said, because um, I had caught one like six months ago, he said that when you see them underwater when you're swimming, like snorkeling, that they sit, they like, they, they swim like this, vertically. And they kind of look like a piece of like kelp or a piece of um, debris, just like vertical in the water. And I think that's kind of like how they, um, you know, disguise themselves. So it's a really cool looking fish and they literally just hang out like this in the water. Really neat to see. But I'm gonna go ahead and release them. Gorgeous blue dots. What's up guys? We've been catching some fish. We got about four nice table fish. Um, I've also been drifting some live baits. So I just wanna tell you guys a little bit about, a little bit of tackle time and show you just the basic bottom rig that we use. And, and a lot of people use, and if you guys go fishing any, almost any time, uh, offshore and doing some bottom fishing or wreck fishing, you can use this simple rig. Uh, and we're using some light tackle today, but here's the gist of it. This is a 3.0 Mustad circle hook. Let me show you the package, I'm sorry. Right here. Fine wire. Fine wire. So we like to use circle hooks uh, for bottom fishing. A lot of guys, and on drift boats, you'll see the three uh, J hooks in the line. That's, that's a real good rig too. That's, that's good. It protects you uh, for some of the kingfish bite offs because it's got three hooks in a row. But uh, you know, we don't do that. But anyway. So we got a 3-0 circle hook. Of course, this is going to be a bigger hook if you have some bigger bait, all right? And then we got with a snail knot, and I'm just going up the line towards the pole. And then we're using a pink Andy leader. Now, I know a lot of guys like to use fluorocarbon, but as we've said before, we find that pink Andy works uh, pretty well and it's pretty cheap. This is 20 pound, really light, because we're trying to get some bites, having trouble getting bites lately, and, and including today. So lighter leader means more bites and more bite offs, but uh, that's the risk you take, all right? We haven't had any too many bite offs today. Anyway, so this is a long leader. This is a 15 foot leader. I've measured before, I know my hands are about five foot stretch. All right, then we're gonna go to a swivel. This could just be any type of swivel. Um, not too important, but this is a must add swivel. And I got that on a uni knot. And then on the other side, before I put the swivel on, I added first a weight. This is weight, and this weight's gonna slide. So you put the weight on first on the main line. This is a six ounce weight, but you can use Really, uh, any, and you see, I got Darcy in the back too, right here. Um, so, and she's hooked up. Let's see what happens. Uh, so you can use any weight, size weight depending on the current and how deep you're going. We're using eight ounces right now. And then a bead. 
all right? The bead is so you don't mess up your knot and so your swivel doesn't get stuck in there. Let's see how a little swizzle, sizzle is doing over there. This is something called a slider rig, a knocker rig, great all around rig. Let's see how she's doing. This is a beautiful mutton. He's short, but we're on the right track. And you can see the circle hook is right in the, circle, in the hook of his mouth, and we can take that out easy and let him go, all right? Darcy's going to probably vent him, get the air out of him. And then get another rig down. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Here's the hook. Already out, and the fish is ready to go. All right, let me get back to this drift fishing. Now, just because we're drifting doesn't mean we're not doing all kinds of other good stuff, too. Now, we got I got Darcy bottom fishing. Up oh, there she is in the background, and and Frank's bottom fishing. But I can also put out some flat lines. I can put out a spinning rod up on top with a live bait, and which I've done. And I also have put a squid out there. And I'm also fishing on the bottom with my standard like a kingfish rig with some wire lines on there with another live bait. So uh, and I also just put out a chum bag out so that uh, we got a lot of stuff going on. You know, uh, we got live baits out with bottom fishing, hitting the whole water column here in South Florida, where. Um, you know the jet streams come so close we got a ledge so close to the to the land you know the fish come through a pretty tight funnel so drifting is really effective I also got the flippy floppy out um, so that's attracting fish and some uh, some rainbow runners came up to that earlier today weren't able to hook them uh, they didn't like our live pilchards but uh, you know this is very effective and uh, saving a lot of gas well not that effective today but it's supposed to be effective you got a west wind so that's not too great but um so you know, so that's what that's our technique today. That's your little tackle time. All right. All right. Just hooked up to a fish. Nice fish. Really, just praying at this point that I can get him up and he doesn't break off and nothing crazy happens because all the odds are against me again, as usual. Oh man, this guy's digging. Come on, come on up, come on up. He's off the bottom now, so that's a good thing. It's a nice mutton. Muttons like to wrap themselves. They're very smart. They like to wrap around sea fans and break you off. So you always got to make sure when you're bottom fishing, you get that fish off the bottom ASAP. So that way there's no structure around him and he can't do anything to interfere with you catching him. These guys really digging. It's a mutton, it's a mutton, it's a mutton, it's a mutton, honey. It's a mutton, honey. It's a mutton, honey. Oh, dinner! I scored! <laughs> what, what? Super stout. That's a mutton, honey. <laughs> Baby! 109 is the way. Dinner in the box. I'm going to put it down on the line. Yeah, hurry up. I got this fish. Give me my give me my help. Okay, hold on. Dude, that's a nice fish. All right, so that was awesome. Darcy's real excited. She wanted to get that, <laughs> get the bait, get the. Darcy's real excited. She wanted to get that bait down again. I just want to show you guys again that that uh, the hook on there, that that circle hook, it was right in the corner of the mouth. You know, and that allows us on the shorts to take that hook out and get them back out there. So make sure you use your mustad circle hooks. You know, as whenever you can, whenever it's appropriate. I mean, don't lose fish. But man, you know, it's uh, it's very easy. You know, you don't got a hook set. The hook grabs a, you know, hook. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the fish hooks himself with this. I'm excited too. Got a nice fish on the boat. That's you know that kind of makes a day. Uh, so that's a great fish. And again, and the mustad circle hook in the hook, corner of the mouth helps you to uh, you know catch fish and release fish. That's you know we want everyone to have fish. Everyone's kids and grandkids and everybody else. Right, Sizzle? Right. Yeah. So I was totally right about that fish. Good thing it really was a mutton. Was just really trying to get him off the bottom because all he wanted to do was just take me around structure around a sea fan and break me off so that's a decent mutton for this area i'm very very happy right now we think we did not get skunked so um and yeah we're in like 110 feet of water so that's like the sweet spot and i pretty much had this live pilchard out the whole time just basically just letting out lines so my my uh, weight stays towards the bottom and then the fish does his own thing because he's a live bait but um, you always want to, when you're bottom fishing, 
make sure that your your weight is at least a foot or two off the bottom when you're drifting um, because if it's right on the bottom you're going to get stuck easy you're going to break off so i like to drop it once i feel it hit bottom i reel up a couple times and then i just slowly let out line every few seconds so like right now i am in free spool i'm towards the bottom and then once i hit like right now i just hit i just kind of reel up once and then I'll do it again in 15 seconds and just continue on. And then that's when I got that hit. I was dropping it back and the mutton slammed the bait. So really cool. this guy is but we're definitely deeper on this drift that we've been doing the same drift that I caught the big mutton just a few minutes ago but we're now in 135 feet of water and usually to me that's a little bit on the deep side um, for bottom fishing with weights and whatnot because it's just hard to keep bottom but now this fish is coming in real easy so I'm wondering if he's floating or if it's like a team fish running all over because he's coming right up so get ready for this weight which one is it? Which one is it? That's one, this one. one. Right here, yep. Mutton, mutton. There's a word in there. Watch yourself, watch yourself. Keep her mutton in the boat! Boom! Killing it. Killing it. He's just over keeper. Probably 17, but I'll take it. See that hook? We're gonna wrap up our day. Awesome day on the water today, bottom fishing. And uh, we finally got redeemed ourselves and got a couple mutton snappers for dinner. Super happy. But we, have, we caught a wide variety of fish, Frank and I and Brian and- I didn't catch anything. Well, anyways, <laughs> we caught um, trigger fish. We caught mult a lot of mutton snappers that were short that we had to release. Um, Frank caught like four that he, had to, he couldn't keep. They're too small, but I caught the two keepers. So, you know, that's how things work. But we also caught yellowtails. We caught vermilion snapper. Grunt, nice grunts. Um, grunts. Um, we even caught some pinfish in the morning for bait. Um, we even caught lizard fish. And, yeah. he, and Frank caught two trumpet fish. Woohoo! A record. Woohoo! So, we're killing it over here. Our biggest mutton, 19 inches. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's but, delicious, though. Yeah, but we're not complaining. We had an awesome day. And um, yeah, we got to go home. The sun's going down, and we're going to be home and wrapping up and taking all our stuff to the house when it's dark so but awesome day so if you guys like this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up for us subscribe to our channel um we have new videos quite a lot during the week now <laughs> we're not sure about every day we're not but... sure about every day um but <laughs> we definitely will be posting a lot so stay tuned subscribe and until our next adventure follow your dream and keep on catching Woo!